So I'm going to ask each part panelists to introduce yourself and give a brief overview of your topic and what you'll be covering in your breakout session. And you have about seven minutes or so for this. And um, you know, if you were around for a while, you know I have my timer going, but approximately five to seven minutes. And it'll go in the order of Deborah Dahl Shanks, then Jennifer Baker and Susie, I think are um, together with that. And then John Gubsky. So Deborah Dahl Shanks, thank you for being a presenter and you're on. Okay, just wanna make sure. Oh, thank you for getting my slide up there. Perfect. Um, all right, I'm Deborah Shanks. I am now a retired part-time faculty member from Diablo Valley College. And I've been involved in uh, retirement issues for part-time faculty for going on over 20 years. Um, and have served on uh, the FAC board as well as uh, the STRS part-time task force. So this is a real quick overview of down and dirty what's going on in retirement. And of course, we'll, I can be there to answer a lot of questions when we get to the breakouts. Um, first of all, I want to mention to part-timers that retirement is probably one of the most confusing and troublesome things that part-timers have to face when they become faculty members. Because we have this huge myriad of choices as compared to full-time faculty who have one choice when they become hired. The defined benefit plan of the state teacher's retirement system is the only plan that is non-negotiable, meaning that every district must offer it. And it's available to all faculty members, full-time, part-time. Beyond that, each district then can negotiate secondary retirement plans, such as STRS cash balance, social security, and a variety of other plans through insurance agencies and other retirement companies. This has been the greatest problem that part-time faculty have faced, mainly because these plans and the decision as to what, cho what choice of plan has often had to be made very quickly by part-timers when they're first hired. Oftentimes they're confused. They're faced with all the newness of being a faculty member, rosters, where to go, where's my class. And they often are not fully informed or given all the information they really need. So one of the things we're examining is um, the idea that it would make more sense for part-timers to default into the main plan and then be given the option to choose something that may better suit their personal life. Because the reality is the defined benefit plan is the best retirement plan for many part-timers because it gives you the best retirement. Yes, you pay in more, but you get more out. For a lot of part-timers, they are career part-timers, they're freeway flyers, they've been doing it for many years. This is the plan that really sets them up for a livable retirement or close to a livable retirement. The other plans are typically more secondary. Cash balance is really more designed for people who have full-time jobs and they teach on the weekend or in the evenings or have a really great job where they pay into social security and they just wanna add more into their social security. So we can ask, we can deal with some questions about this in breakout, but what I wanted to do was share with you what new is coming down the pike. And part of this comes with the fact of how confused and uninformed part-timers are. So we've been working with STRS to develop a new PowerPoint, a new educational workshops, possibly putting out some educational videos that will be on their website where you could go and really get an in-depth information about how the programs work, what is good for you, encouraging part-timers to do more and engage on the STRS website reading statements, trying to learn how to read their statements, looking at their, their work history in the various districts or plans they might be in. Know what plans you're in. Are you in multiple plans? 
Is that in your best interest or not in your best interest? If you find that service credit information is wrong, how to dispute it, with whom, what's the process? And this is really important. It's taking, it's taking control of not just your current life, but your future life. Because at some point, you're gonna wanna retire. I'm very happy retired. Uh, and I had to work very hard to learn how all this worked. And now it's my benefit to save it with you or share it with you. The other thing is, um, STRS is going to be coming out with a new computer system in 2021 called Pension Solution. And again, they're going to probably be reaching out to you members to tell you where you stand, um, answer questions. And we really want to be here for you. So the various organizations, I think, need to really work together to help educate the part-timers, answer their questions, and be there for them um, as they have to make these decisions. So if you have questions, write them down and bring them to the breakout room. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, you came in under time, which is really helpful because we're running a little bit late. And again, breakout rooms is, is the great place to find out more about this. So let's see, let's go ahead and stop sharing your screen and we'll move on to, and I apologize, I can't remember if Jennifer and Susie were going to be a co-presenting, but I have Jennifer next and then Susie after that. So, Thank you. Yes. Thank Go you, ahead. Sally. We actually have the, uh, our presentations all consolidated. Oh, in. that's right. Okay, thank you. We're trying to <laughs> maximize time. So thank you. My name is Jennifer Baker, and I'm an advocate with Murdoch, Walrath, and Fund, and Murdoch, Walrath, and Holmes. And I've actually worked with quite a number of you uh, with a, uh, a few hats over the last 20 years now. Um, and it's actually part-time retirement issues that first got me interested um, in a long journey of understanding how CalSTRS works, or most importantly for part-time faculty, how it doesn't work. Uh, and, and Deborah did a great job um, really laying the, the foundation um, of different options and different aspects of CalSTRS that uh, part-timers need to consider. What I wanted to do is provide you with a very, very quick uh, overview on some of the macro issues that are taking place at CalSTRS and how they may not only impact you, but how they may impact what a district is bargaining. And that can, as you know, impact you in a whole myriad of other ways that you need to be aware of. So what I did wanna make sure that you understood was that in the budget this year, um, there was a package that was put together to reduce district contributions to CalSTRS by almost 2% over the next couple of years. And that was really meant to try to provide a cushion for districts because um, they have been struggling financially because as you know, we don't get adequate funding for education. But in addition, because they've been seeing increased costs in a number of other areas uh, without enough resources to cover. So as a result, uh, district contributions to CalSTRS were reduced by about uh, 2% for the next two fiscal years, and that's saving uh, school employers about $2.3 billion. So that is something that is impacting all of your districts that you need to be aware of. Um, that's something you'll want to consider at the bargaining table. For members that were hired after 2014, so if you are a brand new part-time faculty member and had not previously worked prior to 2014, you are what's known as a PEPRA member. So you actually, there are two different tiers. So if you were hired prior to 2014, uh, your retirement, uh, if you are in the CalSTRS defined benefit plan, which is going to be the plan that's going to provide you the most retirement security if you're planning on doing this at least five full time years or more. If you, uh, if you started before 2014, your retirement formula is going to be 2% at 60. And that formula is capped at 10.25%. So that's what, uh, that's really what you're paying now. Um, and that's, uh, that can't be changed unless there is legislation that would offset that in some way. But for those new part-time members that were hired after 2014, 
Your retirement formula is 2% at 62. You're a PEPRA member. And because of some of the changes that were made under PEPRA, which is the Post-Employment uh, Public Re uh, uh, Pension Re Reform Act, uh, there are a number of changes that can take place in the future that could cause you to have to pay increased contributions to CalSTRS. So if in the future, the cost towards CalSTRS were to increase overall, you could potentially be paying 11 or even 12%, potentially even 13% over the next number of years. Granted, there are a number of changes that would have to happen, uh, such as changing the uh, investment rate of return. We might see additional changes in contribution rates, but I did wanna let you know that the amount that you're paying to CalSTRS is not static and that could fluctuate over time. So it's important to know, especially if you're at the bargaining table, you wanna be able to differentiate uh, because you do have two different tiers. You might wanna consider that as you're trying to rec uh, recognize inequalities. I did want to also note that the current uh, shortfall, it's called the actuarial unfunded obligation. Really, what it really means is there was a shortfall to CalSTRS that happened because of both the dot-com bust and because of the Great Recession. Uh, but there was a plan that was put into place in 2014, maybe 1469. That plan is working and it's slowly reducing the overall shortfall to CalSTRS. It's going to take about 32 years uh, to make that happen. Uh, but the good news is we're moving in the right direction. Uh, more positive news on the CalSTRS note is that at the end of August, the investment assets for CalSTRS were at over $262 billion. And what's important to note about that is we did see a little blip that happened when the COVID recession began. But since CalSTRS had just gone through the Great Recession, they instituted a number of investment changes to actually help them to weather these kinds of storms. So they weren't hit as hard as they initially were during the Great Recession. Um, they are uh, exposed to uh, quite a bit to the U.S. market, uh, which is about 72.5%. And as you may know, uh, the market has been struggling because of COVID. So there are, they are currently evaluating a number of their asset allocations. And whatever happens in their investment portfolio has a direct relationship to what contribution rates are in the future, which is why I wanted to let you know um, they're, they're doing a great job. Um, they look like they're on target to actually meet most of their investment expectations. So that's very good for the next three to five years of contribution rates. And then finally, I wanted to know um, something that is probably going to be of significant interest to you, particularly in the future, is the fact that CalSTRS is undertaking a significant increase in the number of audits that they're conducting. But it's really important to note that many of the findings um, that they're, uh, they're realizing in this audit process are taking place after someone may have been retired for a number of years. And they're finding that they're having to reduce a number of retirees uh, their what their retirement check is because they were overpaid because either a district uh, incorrectly reported to CalSTRS, which as Deborah noted, does happen, uh, but also because um, there have been a number of instances where districts just haven't received accurate information to CalSTRS. So they may have thought that they were re reporting correctly when it turns out that they were given misinformation or confusing information from CalSTRS. And so the importance of actually checking in early on to make sure that what a district is sharing in regard to your credible compensation and what your earnables are is so incredibly important because if they make mistakes and later on down the road find out that you were being overpaid, they're gonna go back and correct that and you're gonna have to pay back that money. And that also means that your retirement salary is gonna be reduced. And when you're already retired and we're planning on living on a, a certain salary, that can have a major impact on your overall retirement security and your lifestyle. Now, granted, if they find out it was a mistake and you need to be getting paid more, who wouldn't love that situation? <laughs> but what we're trying to do is to, we're trying to make sure that we're capturing 
um, those mistakes that happen before people retire so that people won't uh, find themselves in a situation where they're being audited and then they're going to have to pay back additional money. So um, the last good uh, note, and Deborah already noted the pension solution project that is going to be wrapping up later on in 2021. One of the really important aspects of this pension solution uh, program is the fact that they're going to be able to differentiate between different kinds of employees. Right now, the, they can tell if someone's a K-12 uh, CalSTRS member and someone's a community college CalSTRS member, but CalSTRS can't tell if you're a part-time community college employee if you're a chan or if you're a chancellor, although it's easy to tell with a chancellor if you look at the salary. Uh, but the reality is the fact that we haven't been able to distinguish between part-time faculty has been one of the reasons why it's been very difficult for Calster staff to be able to identify and make uh, programmatic recommendations for how they can enhance retirement options for part-time faculty. So I am really hopeful that in the next number of years, when we start to see that data emerge, we might be able to identify clear policy recommendations that might be able to give a more equitable and balanced retirement option to part-time faculty. And with that, if you have questions, I'll be in the breakout room. And I wanted to turn it over to Susie for a little more information on the WEP and GPO. Thank you, Jennifer. As um, you know now, my name is Susie Dixon. I was an, an educator for 37 years and I've been retired five years. I am currently the state chair of government relations for the California Retired Teachers Association. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the two government pension, the government pension offset and the windfall elimination penalty. These are two offsets that especially affect all of the part-time faculty members. Um, we really, CalRTA has been working on getting these two unjust penalties repealed for many years. So I hope by educating you, you will join in that cause because you have, um, as I even heard earlier, you have a lot on your plate right now as part-time faculty. It, it's just really a challenging time. The first one I'm gonna discuss is the windfall elimination provision. And that one was signed into a social security reform in 1983 by President Reagan. The overall purpose at the time was to remove what they felt was an unintended advantage. Someone who gets a uh, public pension, did not pay into social security, and then someone who also was working either at a second job, as many of you do, or a second career profession where they pay into Social Security. They felt that it was an un unfair advantage to be able to collect the two and treated them both the same. But it was unfortunate because it has many unintended consequences, mostly being that if you are eligible to collect Social Security, you've earned 40 or more quarters, they consider this a double dipping when you get a CalSTRS pension or any other public pension. Nationwide, there's about 1.9 million people affected by the WEP, three, about 3% 3 of Social Security beneficiaries. Now remember when we always impress upon this, your social security that you've paid in is an earned benefit. It would be an example that your STRS is gonna have a penalty because you had, you had paid in and that was an earned benefit. I will share more in the breakout room how this windfall elimination, the WEP affects most who have less than 20 years. If you have less than 20 years paying into social security, your penalty is over close to half of what you are eligible for. Again, your earned benefit. So if you're, you're eligible for $600 a month under the WEP because you get a government pension, CalSTRS, you will be lucky to see under $300 a month. The only time you are not penalized under the WEP is when you reach 30 years of paying into Social Security. And that's very difficult when 
as many of you are as part-time faculty, juggling different uh, colleges, different coursework, and then on top of that, you have a, a job or profession that you are paying into Social Security. The other Social Security penalty is the government pension offset. And we like to refer to this one mostly as a women's issue. Unfortunately, most educators are women, um, not as much in the, in the colleges, but the majority of our educators throughout the state are women, over 77%. So when the government pension offset was enacted in 1977, it was designed to treat, a, again, a public pension, our CalSTRS, as though Social Security benefit was the same, considering it a dual benefit. Educators in 15 states chose not to pay into Social Security and only pay into their defined benefit plan, California being one of those. And you think about this, 1977, the average salary of a teacher going home to say that I'm going to pay into my CalSTRS benefit each month and then I'm going to have Social Security taken out. It sounded like a good deal. It sounded like I, I don't want to do Social Security. Um, Unfortunately, again, unintended consequences are severe. When Social Security was enacted, women did not work. It's been only the last 30 years that most households have a two income family. So the women, the Social Security spousal benefit was set up. So when a, when a spouse, and I'm just gonna, for the sake of it, say the man was the primary breadwinner and he was eligible to collect his social security each month. At the same time, and this is true today, if a wife is not or a spouse is not eligible with those 40 quarters, on top of it while they're living, the, the social security beneficiary, the spouse gets half of that. When the spouse passes, the, the living spouse, the wife usually, is entitled to that full amount that the spouse was getting each month. Now, again, remember that person did not pay into social security. That was the argument why the GPO affects those who did not pay into social security, the 15 states we pay into our defined benefits plan. We took that argument and switched it. And you can go to the next slide, please, Jennifer. And we made this scenario. This is online on our website. We wanted to show our elected officials that that is not an un, that's an unfair argument. If you look at scenarios two and three, you have two spouses stay at home, whether they have a, a high degree or no higher education, they did not pay or qualify for those 40 quarters. Just as scenario four, us our teachers who do not pay in. Now, a lot of you I hear do pay into Social Security also, but if you're only paying into a defined uh, benefit plan, you would go into this area as number four. Susie, just a quick uh, interruption, but you have just sure. less than a minute, so about 45 seconds. Okay, sorry. Thanks. Um, so when you look at this, you can see that the, the uh, spouse that did not pay in is able to collect that 50% above. And then when the spouse passes, they get the full amount. You do not, you are not entitled to that. Even if you're paying into social security as a part-time college professor, if your spouse is paying in full-time, you will not see the spousal benefit. So if you wanna um, go over that on our website and I'll go over more in the chat room. We also came up with the cost. The WEP cost is, out of the $7 trillion annually Social Security puts out, it's 9 billion, GOP 4 billion, and repeal for both is only 13 and a half. So we do present that to our elected officials. I would encourage everyone, if you are even as a young person, to go on the Social Security website and look at how that wet penalty and the GPO, if it applies to you, and make plans accordingly. And also I'll talk about how we do our virtual advocacy to get this, these unfair penalties repealed um, in the chat room. 
Thank you. Thank you, Susie and Jennifer, and of course, Deborah to start us. And John, you get to round it off here, John Gutsky, and I've got my timer going. You got seven minutes. You got your timer. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I can share my screen, correct? You should be able to. Okay. Um, I was asked to um, provide slides. And I was like, well, it's a live, it's a live website. So what I'd like to do is just um, work off of this. Yeah. Uh, can you all it. see that? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I, I, because I do websites all the time, I just made a website for um, unemployment uh, guidance for part-time faculty. It has grown over time and now it's extremely detailed. So, um, uh, this is online. It's contingentworld.com. And um, what, I, what I did is I originally did uh, filing guides for Cabrillo College faculty. And then I uh, put so much time and energy into that, I realized I could kind of genericize it for all community college faculty, which is what I did. So, um, so it's a very step-by-step -step screen. There's well over 100 screenshots on this site. Um, it's been through several iterations. People said, well, you know, I really like a site that has screenshots and this and that. I was like, oh, okay. So over time, this has evolved and it's quite comprehensive. And we use it in the workshops that we do at, at my school. And I can go through this and I will do it briefly. Uh, but what I really would like to talk about maybe in the breakout room is, is encouraging your local organization, whether it's a union or association or whatever, to conduct um, at the end of every semester, uh, unemployment workshops that are very detailed, hands-on, step-by-step through Zoom for your part-time faculty the end of, at the end of every semester and, and why that's a good idea and how you can do it and um, how many people that helps. Um, we, you know, we do a lot of this advocacy work and it gets a little tiring. And I found that working on helping people file their unemployment claims was more rewarding than almost anything because it put thousands of dollars in their pockets. Uh, and I thought that was really valuable. So that's my goal is to get as much money and to add into our part-time faculty's pockets as possible. Now, unemployment is something that pretty much all part-time faculty are eligible for between every term, whether you are, whether you've signed a contract that you're gonna teach in the fall or whether you've accepted an offer, uh, whatever, it's the mere fact that the, any assignment that you have can be canceled for a variety of reasons makes you eligible. And uh, I won't go into detail, but you know, we in California we have the Cervici court decision. It's a state court decision that um, that really is great for California. Um, I know that in most other states and almost all other states, they don't have this. They have to fight for, to file for unemployment if you're a contingent faculty member. But uh, and New Jersey is legislatively trying to do what we did through the Cervici state court decision in California. But right now we, we are in a really great spot. If, if you are a part-time faculty member and you are not uh, employed, uh, you're between semesters, between terms, you are almost guaranteed to be able to get your unemployment. Um, the only thing that would stop you is if you also had some other paying gig. Uh, and then of course that would be offset by whatever you were making. But generally speaking, the major problem I have is that most people don't file. And so you want to encourage your members, your, your colleagues to file because, you know, it's worth about $5,000 a year. Uh, if you get four fifty dollars a week for the, for the winter uh, and summer break and you're not teaching, it's about $5,000 and that's real money. And I, I always say to people, hey, for two hours of work, you're going to get $5,000. What do you think? Is it worth it? So um, the, uh, th this website has pretty detailed stuff. This is the overview page. <laughs> um, and so um, there are, you know, we've probably, some of you are familiar with this and some of you aren't, but the main thing that you want to do is avoid the gotcha questions of, you know, do you have a date to return to for work? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, oh, well, then you're, you're not eligible, are you? Um, some unemployment guides say to answer no if you are asked if you have a date to return to work. Now, as I explain here, um, I tell people, I, I always answer yes. If I'm filing and I have a date for the fall, I say, yes, I do have a date to return to work. Um, and then I explain, you know, it's contingent and can be canceled and I, I never have a problem. Um, I believe in being as honest as possible. And the question is pretty straightforward. 
do you have a return to work date for any employer? So I always say yes. Now I know that some guides and the, the old fact guide even said answer no to this question because it's not a guaranteed assignment. So, you know, you can do that or you can answer yes, but this is one of the divergent points that a lot of people get confused on. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter whether you answer yes or no, you're gonna get it as long as you don't do the wrong thing uh, in another part of your application. But um, the, um, the starting point that I take people to, okay, so the guide to filing a new claim, uh, we always try to get our folks to get all their information available ahead of time. And so if you're running a workshop, you wanna have people pre-register, you wanna find out information about where they're at, like do they teach at multiple institutions or one, have they filed before? Um, I'm almost out of town. Yeah, oh, awesome. you'll have plenty of time in the breakout. Okay, so in the breakout, I like to talk about how to conduct a workshop and why you should do it and how to do it. But for now, um, I just want to point out there are a few things on this site that really make filing easier. I have a, um, uh, a little calculator here for the quarterly income. Those of you who have filed before know that when you um, have to do your quarterly breakouts, it's kind of a pain. I have it all so that it really makes it easy to fill in the forms for um, your unemployment. I even have step-by-steps on how to fill out the bi-weekly certifications, um, you know, whether or not you had work in one of the weeks or not. So it's pretty comprehensive and detailed. And I have to say, after looking a lot of all the other unemployment guides in California, it's the most comprehensive one. And I think that um, if you um, had your folks look at it, they, they might find it very helpful to file. Okay, I'll stop there. Thank you, John. Yes, that it is a great one, um, a great site. And again, look in the chat, there's more information and comments there too. Regarding the chat, we'll try to address questions as we can uh, at some point, but thank you all for the panel, panelists. And um, remember when you signed up as, um, as an attendee, you probably selected one of the four panelists to break out to. So if you wanna leave the room, you can leave it. It'll either put you in another room or you'll you'll be back in the main room and Arnie can help you. So we'll have about, we're gonna make it about 25 minutes or so, 25, 30 minutes at the most, but we'll bring you back in, a, in 30 minutes and we'll do a little reconvening. So enjoy your time um, hearing about more in question and answer period. And uh, we'll meet at uh, about 10, I think we're set, scheduled for 30, but I'm gonna see if we can come back at four, 10. All right, so join your breakout room. If you're not sure how to even get to it, if it went away, go down to the breakout room icon down there and it'll take you there. So folks here, just let me know if I haven't put you in the right breakout room. Uh, I'll just go in order. I've got some chats here. Let's just make Holly's good. Uh, John's good. Jeff, uh, where are you now, Jeff? Which room are you are you signed up for? I was in unemployment. I wanted to switch over to CalSTRS because okay, I'm Okay, sure. Let me just find you. I okay. have to get going. I just wanted to thank you for having me, Sally. Thanks, Christy. Bye, Christy. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, Arby. Good to see Go you. Go Napa Valley. Woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. I'll see you bye. all later. Bye-bye. This is Robin. I wanted to be in CalSTRS too. Okay, what are you in now? I don't know. You might be in you there guys, now already. Everybody that's in here, if you click breakout rooms at the bottom, you can join whichever room you want. They don't have to assign you. Sometimes if you haven't updated the recent version of Zoom, you, you have to be manually inserted. Oh, I thought they oh. forced the update now. Oh, okay, because yeah. I don't, yeah, uh, I don't well, thank see you. breakout room. Not everybody, I have to sign no, people. Okay. Yeah, a lot of you can just choose. If you can choose, just go where you want. I want to uh, go okay, to La La so, Land. Sorry, Robin, where are you at now? <laughs> uh, Casters, <laughs> making me laugh. Casters. Okay, and where do you want to go? No, I said I want to go to Casters. I don't okay, know where, where I'm at. Okay, where now? I have the list by where, you, where you've been assigned, so I have to kind of look it up. Uh, oh, Robin, I got gotcha. you. Okay, Calsters. There you go. Thank uh, you. Let's see. Claire, where'd you want to go? I want to go to the the part-time retirement. It was there was a little bit about Calsters, it. but it okay. was also and, uh, Dr. A. Courtney. Are you here? Can you? I'm here. Hi. Can, see it. Can you please get me to Calsters, please? Sure. Thank you.
Okay, who else is left here? John. Um, hey. John, where do you want to go? Uh, I want to go to the WEP. WEP, and where are you now? Un uh, unemployment. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see, Rhonda. I've got you. You want to go to the web? Let's see if I can get that. Hi, Arnie. It's Renda. Um, Renda. Yeah. You know, Let I, me see if I, I can. I thought I had signed up for the Calsters Hot Topics, but I was sent to the web breakout. Oh, so and I've... you. So you you're in web, but you want to go to Calsters. Correct. Right. Thank you. There, I see you. Uh, Calsters should work. Thank okay, you. Renda's good. Anybody um, in the wrong place? Yes, um, I'm an unemployment, but I need to go to Calsters, please. Okay. This is Hortensia. Hortensia Calsters, gotcha. Who's next? Jump in. This is Lynn. I would like to go to unemployment, but I'm in Calsters. Okay, Calsters and go to unemployment. Hmm. Okay, got it. Lynn's uh, to unemployment. Anyone else? Arnie, are we going to get another link? No, to you've got to go down to the bottom and it should say uh, breakout rooms. And then yeah. you click on that and you'll you'll be able to hopefully go to that room. Oh, but is it titled Retirement Cluster? Is that the one? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see, Ashley Evans, do you want to check something out? I have you just kind of idle. I think I'm good. Yeah. I'm kind of multitasking here to catch up on some stuff, to be honest. So, sure. okay. No uh, worries. Yeah, yeah. So I think I'm good. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stick in here for when, cause folks it, are going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. It might uh, be for, good to just check in and see if the, if they're recording the one, the, I think the social security was the one that we really wanted to record. Okay. Um, I don't know, someone or Ashley. Ashley, can you go and check? Yeah, I don't mind. Okay. Uh, I th which was the one? I think it was Social Security was the one we really wanted to record. Okay. Uh, Dana, how are you doing? You want to get moved around? No, I was just going to I was trying to find Lydia to message Lydia. Okay, she's here. Yeah, I see her there. I'm going to message here. her. Arnie, uh, something seems to be going on. Uh, you're moving me to Colsters and I'm still here with you. Okay. Uh, sorry, who was speaking? Hortensia. Oh, Hortensia. You may need to go. Let's see. Let me just make sure you're listed. You want to go to Calsters? Yes, please. And you are listed in Calsters. So I think what you need to do is go down to the bottom of your screen in the breakout room. Yeah, I did that. I found that. And the little that. button didn't work? Mm -mm. Huh. Nope. Okay. So we have three groups. We have the Calsters and uh, retirement, and then the Cal RTA Social, uh, RTA Social Security Web G GPO, and then unemployment. And I have you set for that room uh, for Calsters. So I'm not sure what's going on, unfortunately. Let me try to move back and forth and see if that, that gets it. Sometimes that might work. Okay, I'm gonna move you to unemployment and then I'll move you back and we'll see if okay. that resets things. Okay, no, everything's working on my end. It shows that you're you're moving, but just that you haven't joined. So I think you just have to go down to that uh, that breakout room icon on the bottom of your screen and see if that works. Maybe try to join and come back and maybe that'll reset it. But it's it's everything's showing well on my screen, so I don't know what mm. else I can for that yeah that's okay that's, sorry about that. you're gonna be recording all these right supposedly hopefully they press record okay i should probably pause this um just to bring it all together a little bit more we want to appreciate everybody's participation and contributions thank you to all the panelists today um is you know i hope debbie is um, going to be with us tomorrow debbie are you still with us she might have keep asking for Debbie when she leaves. Uh, she Debbie, will be joining us tomorrow, yes. Us tomorrow, yeah. Okay, good. Then we'll be able to introduce her then too. Um, 
And um, let's see, tomorrow, I'm just going to check this chat here. Can we let people know we'll be recording? Um, yes, we'll be recording uh, tomorrow's sessions too. I'm hoping that the sessions, the breakout sessions were recorded this time. I forgot to remind people, but if it wasn't, I think I'd start the recording going for a couple of them I popped in on, but if it wasn't, um, then so be it. But uh, uh, it will be recorded to, to the cloud and we'll get it off to you on Monday at some point. So this is where we are officially uh, going to take a break or end. And I wanna remind you that we start, it's the same login information, same link tomorrow, and it starts at 9 a.m. Uh, so, We'll meet at that time, Come get on a, a few minutes early is fine. We'll let you in at nine and we'll have a, um, a really interesting session tomorrow and help bring it all together for our last session too. But um, we do have time now. What we'll do is if you want to either revisit some of those earlier discussions or continue on, or if you have questions of people that are here or you saw someone that you think, oh, I always wanted to ask, you know, so-and-so about their contract. Um, now's the time to do that because we're gonna have about another 10 minutes or so. And Arnie has been instructed at 4.30, <laughs> we're gonna end. So even if you're in mid-sentence, we will uh, we'll cut this off right about 4.30. So um, sorry about that if you're saying, and another thing, and then you get cut off. So um, that's just part of it. We can't all hang out here all night. Um, and yes, Nurse Susan has reminded you to get your flu shots, wear your masks when you go out. We don't have to wear masks in this, this uh, symposium. So tell me what you think, what, either something from this last session, is there something burning that you wish we would have covered? Um, Arlene's got a hand up. We have a hand, a real hand? Yeah, a real hand. Okay. Overall that's... participant. One thing I want to add to all of you, since so many of the adjuncts are trying to collect unemployment right now and they're having problems, there is a really cool website on Facebook, not website, it's a Facebook page, and it's called California EDD Problems and Solutions. And it's kind of a self-help group. People with problems say, hey, I'm having problems with this, what's going on? And other people have the solutions and it's wonderful. They've got phone numbers to call. They've got explanations. Sometimes it's just assuring people, no, just be patient. So California EDD problems and you'll find it on Facebook and spread the word with your adjuncts. And that's a thank you. That's a great tip. Is that something that's very general or is it specific to education? Specific to California. But, oh, but it's all sorts of situations too. Okay, I mean, it's not just for unemployed teachers. for different reasons. So it's not just education. Okay. But they have even heads up about if you get called in for an appointment, should I, should I be scared or what should I take with me? If I have to see a, a judge, what do I take with me? You know, that kind of stuff. So it's just general. Great, thank you. Okay, are there physical hands or? little cartoon hands up. Um, anything else? Any comments so far about, about um, what we've discussed? Do you feel like sitting here all night just staring at these boxes? <laughs> Terry's got a, a hand there. Terry? Thank you. How come I don't see that? Where? Okay. Is it Terry? There we go. Just need to unmute, Terry. attended John's workshop, workshop and his excellent um, demo of his website, Customize for Adjunct Faculty. I think that should be put in the chat. And John did a great job of all the unemployment tips because as educators, there's a bunch of neat stuff. So thank you, thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. I got to pop in for the later part, but I had connected with John earlier and I thought, ooh, I know the website now, so I'm, I've got the in, <laughs> but now you all have the in. So John, thank you so much for doing that. that I know that took a lot of work. And, I, and David, thank you for posting that in the, um, in the chat about uh, the latest web and GPO. I just lost it where to go, but um, take a look at the chat because people are posting things in there. Um, 
I neglected to, I wanna thank again, the part-time faculty committee and I, I'll do that again tomorrow morning, but um, this is, I'm the face and the person here, but it's, I'm just that. I mean, we were, we were a team and I really appreciate the support from the faculty and um, our staff at FAC and the CPFA. We, this is, you know, this has been more monumental. I have to say it, it was, I took on more than I thought I was when I was doing this, when I was decided uh, or was um, chosen as the part-time committee chair. I thought, yeah, I can do that. And then the pandemic and then this turned virtual and I'm like, oh, okay. Where's my massage therapist? <laughs> John has um, a hand up. I just, to, I just want to, one thing I've started to do with all my classes is um, remind students or everybody um, that um, your chance to save the chat is good until we end the meeting. So if you wanted to save a lot of the good links and stuff that are in the chat, you should do that now um, because after the meeting ends, it goes away. It's the three little dots uh, to the right bottom corner. And if you click on that, it should say save chat and you can have that file. Exactly. Yes. And we'll save all those links for you. So I always remind people before a meeting ends to save the chat. Thank you, good, very good suggestion. Uh, any other hands? Let me go back. Um, I'm trying to get my whole Brady Bunch in here, a huge family. I don't see hands or anything else. What three little dots, please? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What three little dots to say? The, the, the lower right hand corner of the chat window, there should be three little dots. Thank you. They're next very next faint. Them. They're very They're faint. They're right next to the file icon. Right. Yeah. And that's where you get the save chat option. Thank you. I don't have that on mine. Just to follow up with what Sally was saying here, uh, I really encourage everybody to be here in time to hear there are two keynote speakers, and because they will bring some really good in-depth analysis of our status and a way to improve it, our status. So uh, make sure if you got other friends, uh, they may want to come and hear this. It's, again, part of the reason we're holding this symposium is to educate ourselves. And us in the room, but some of us are fairly pretty good, but uh, there's a lot of us in here in this room are new hearing all this, which is good. Um, now we just gotta keep doing more outreach. And that's another function that the, the FAC, FAC wants to do, more outreach, and obviously CPFA wants to do the same thing. So this is very encouraging today. We had almost 100, and I hope we'll have at least 100 again tomorrow morning to hear our keynote. Right, Sally? Right, and David, you, you had a hand up, but then it went away. Oh, I, I was just hoping that we were all going to be able to say thank you to everyone for showing up and thank you to FAC and CPFA and Sally, you've done a fabulous job as our MC today. So bravo. <laughs> thank you. I, I did see somebody was gonna bring donuts or asking about donuts. So um, BYOD, get your own donut. <laughs> Well, anything else? We just have a last couple minutes and we're gonna, we'll be cutting it off. If, um, if I could really strongly suggest the presentation of Vancouver is going to be very inspiring and that's going to lead into our legislative discussion at the end of tomorrow's session. And I think everyone is going to want to be there to hear ideas, to contribute ideas and be part of the discussion of where do we all go together from here, so. That would be really exciting. Yeah. And most people, I think, um, it's really rare in Santa Barbara. I'm looking outside now, but it might be raining tomorrow anyway. So you might as well be indoors sharing it with your colleagues and, uh, and uh, share in the discussion. So seeing no more anything else. Um, I see Trisha from my school. Did you want to say anything about non-credit, Trisha? We, has anybody else uh, wave your hand if you're a non-credit? Do you teach non-credit? A, a wave of the hand. There's a couple of people. Okay, Trisha is our academic oh, senate. 
Yeah, now I want this is very interesting and, and um, especially in light of some of the things we've been discussing uh, in Senate about the, the class caps and all the, you know, the, the, the part-time, whether, you know, we would go at over, faculty overloads or um, hiring part-time faculty to offset the budget deficit. But um, I just wanted to thank you everybody for all the presentations. And also just to, what I wanted to ask though is about, you said this is recorded. So I may not be able to go to all of it tomorrow. So I, we can get, even if we're not attended, we, attending, we can get recordings of it then. You'll be, you'll be emailing it to us. Yes, I'm not okay. sure we got everything, the, all the breakout sessions just now, mm -hmm. but we will definitely make sure it's recorded tomorrow, the whole thing. Okay. Yes, Great. Trisha, um, we'll Thank let you. you know. I think I saw Kathy's hand up. Kathy Runkle, or did you, oh, that was thumbs up. That's all you, did you have anything else? Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, it's happy hour now. <laughs> So I, again, thank you on behalf of FAC, and as John said to CPFA, we're happy you're joining us, and let's hope I see you tomorrow. Um, and uh, save the chat if you want to have some interesting reading later. And we'll see you hasta mañana, de la mañana. Have a good night. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Arnie. Hi, everybody. See you tomorrow. Nice. Thank you, Arnie. Yes. yes Yay, Arnie. Arnie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. Donna Franklin, oh. did you go? No, I'm still here. Who needs oh. me? No, this is Susan Reno. I've just, I was just seeing your thing, your comment. Um, I just want to make sure that you bring that back up tomorrow. I that's the first time I've heard that. Oh yes, it's a big secret, but it's fun. yeah, it is. We make about two thirds uh, teaching the very same class as I taught for credit as non-credit. I'm making about two thirds. I'm like, I can't get my chin to drop down far enough. Okay. I know. Because I definitely want to hear lab. about that. If you're teaching a PE lab, you're already at bottom of the line pay. And I'm yeah. making two thirds of that. So that when I go to the Y and teach, which pre pandemic I did and to community centers, I was actually making the same as in college. The difference is I need a degree to teach in college. You don't need anything to teach at the Y. So yeah. it's really sad, very yeah. sad. I have that never heard first, that, I'm uh, sorry. We're trying to equalize that in our local. Please do. Bringing the CE or our credit pay back up to the adjuncts and making that first before we even ask for more for compared to full-timers because it, it was just be nice. divisive to have those two. Do, any, do anybody three know? Tiers, you know. Do, any, well, do anybody know if Proposition 15 passed? Oh, I saw something come out about it just close. a minute ago. It's close. I haven't read the latest, though. It's very close, and 16 wasn't even close. Uh, it was right. miles apart. I, I did hear about no, that. it's at 51.9, no, and 48.1, yes. Very right sad. Now. Very sad, because that would have actually yeah. brought a lot of money into our our world. Well, it doesn't say that it's final, though. So this is only 77%. So it's not final yet. Yeah, That's they pretty have close. Of votes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. OK, okay let's sorry, um, bring sorry, that up. I just wanted to get that out. Good discussion point. Yeah. Thank, thank you. We'll thank talk you, about Yes. Huge. Yes, yes for sure. OK, oh, let's cut it off, folks. Right. We'll see you tomorrow at 9. See you tomorrow. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.